All right, let's bring in Vicente Arenas with our Denver affiliates, a city which has struggled to handle a sudden but expected surge in migrants who've arrived there since Title 42 ended. Vicente, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we know Denver's mayor recently reactivated that emergency operations center in response to all of these new arrivals. What can you tell us about that? How is the city there handling the influx? Hey, Nicole, very interesting to see that happen. We had this influx of immigrants all of a sudden start coming into Denver. And in addition to these uh, information centers that have been set up for the immigrants, we started asking the questions, why are they coming to Denver? Very interesting that a lot of them, a majority of them, I should say, are coming from Venezuela. And what would happen is they'd set up on the border around Title 42 right before it went into effect. and. All of a sudden, we started seeing all these people from Venezuela walking down the streets, going into resource centers. And so this, this center was set up to help the migrants settle in our city until they would go somewhere else. Many of them have ended up staying. Others have gone to other places. So the situation was under control. But then they started coming again. And then on May 9th, there was this surge of immigrants that came, some 400 in one day. And a few statistics. Some of those numbers have decreased since then. There are maybe about 40 or 50, day, 50 a day coming now. So those numbers have settled somewhat. But that center was set up to deal with all of the issues uh, of the immigrants coming into town. They were set up like in rec centers, some are in churches. You can see them walking down the streets. Uh, I've covered immigration for quite some time. I'm from Texas, lived close to the border, worked on the border. And then when I saw them coming to Denver, I said, whoa, this is very interesting because Denver is not known as an immigration city. But now we see them coming here. And for the most part, this city seems welcoming of them. Nicole? Yeah, Vicente, we know the city has spent uh, some $15 million on that migrant support since last December. We saw that uh, in the graphic there, but the reimbursement has really been only a small sliver of that. We know the mayor, uh, the governor has called on the federal government to provide more resources. Do you know if more reimbursement is coming? That's a big question. It's kind of like, okay, we've got all the immigrants coming in, but who's going to pay the bill? I checked with the city today, and what the city is telling me that so far $2 million has come from the state of Colorado, and some $909,000 have come from the feds. But our governor here has said, hey, guys, we need some help. These immigrants are still coming. We've got these services set up here for them. But what do we do next? Some of those immigrants settling here in town, some are going to other places, and, and they continue to, coming, to come. This was not an issue that was something that we saw in the last five or six years. It started right around when Title 42 became an issue. So the big question is, hey, where is this money going to come from? The city still struggling to find that. And get this, the mayor of our city even said at one point that if we don't start getting enough money to pay for these services for the immigrants here in Denver, there are some services that might have to be cut back. So that's something that we're watching for now, Nicole. All right, so Vicente, last question for you. We just uh, listened to Ali there following up on Robert there in Indianapolis. How about there in Denver? You know, have you had a chance to speak to migrants who are successfully utilizing uh, the available resources, who are finding jobs, who are finding places to live? Can I give you a firsthand account of what I'm seeing on the streets of Denver? Uh, I live in a neighborhood where just down the street there is a center that caters to migrants. And I cannot tell you whether or not for sure if they have jobs or not. They will tell me that they do, but I'm not it's not confirmed for sure if they have like really uh, if they found a place to work. And I've asked the city if they have a place to work. The city won't tell me because it's a private uh, situation. It's a confidential situation. But here's what I see on the streets of Denver now. I wake up really early in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. I'm driving down the street and you see these guys, mostly men, are walking down the street with lunch pails. They've got their hard hats on and they've got safety vests on. I can only assume from what I'm seeing there, they're going somewhere to work. They are taking advantage of, of or they're using some of the resources here and folks are giving them jobs. That's usually what a lot of them do when they come to places like Denver. A lot of them are just struggling. You see them standing on a street corner. They've got phones in their hand. They're trying to contact their families back home. They're trying to figure out what they're gonna do next, if they're gonna leave Denver or if they're gonna stay here and try to figure out what happens next with their immigration issues in this city. Very interesting to see all of that play out here, Nicole. Yeah, more perspective there from the center of our country. Vicente Arenas from our Denver affiliate. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.